first time in more than 11 years, Kennedy cousin Michael Skakel is waking up outside the walls of a prison today. But his legal fight over a 1975 murder is far from over. We'll have an exclusive interview with his attorney in just a moment. But first, here's NBC's Ron Mott. All right. Though convicted for murder 11 years ago, 53-year-old Michael Skakel is once again presumed innocent in the eyes of the law, yet still charged in the 1975 bludgeoning death of 15-year-old Connecticut schoolgirl Martha Moxley. Hopefully, we are at the first step of righting that wrong and making sure that an innocent man now goes free. Skakel, a nephew of Ethel Kennedy, posted a $1.2 million cash bail after an appellate judge overturned his 2002 conviction last month, declaring he got ineffective counsel during his trial. Thank you. Today, with a new lawyer, Skakel right, faces the prospects of being retried or sent back to prison without a new trial should the state win an appeal of this latest ruling. The state has not announced if it will retry the case if the decision is upheld. Look, they got a conviction. And, and they probably think they could get a conviction again. However, the observers of this trial, like myself, I felt the evidence was very weak. At Thursday's bond hearing, State Attorney John Smurga seemed to acknowledge imperfections in the prosecution's case against Skakel. No DNA, no fingerprints, no eyewitness. Moxley was found beaten to death in her family's yard on Halloween 1975. The weapon, police say, was a golf club belonging to the Skakel family, who lived next door. Skakel wasn't indicted until nearly 25 years later. And now that he's home for the holidays, Martha Moxley's family says they're disappointed, yet hopeful. Our thoughts are that Judge Bishop's uh, decision will be overturned. I mean, all of this has been heard in so many different courts, and it's going back to some of the same courts. Michael Skakel out of prison, though not free. For today, Ron Mott, NBC News, Stanford, Connecticut. Hubert Santos is Michael Skakel's appellate attorney. He's with us now exclusively. Mr. Santos, good to see you. Good to see you. Did Michael Skakel describe his emotions to you as he walked out of that courthouse a free man yesterday? Um, he didn't describe them, but you could see by his, his conduct that a great weight had been lifted off his sh sh shoulders. And the first thing he said to me when we posted the bond, his first remarks were, thank God. Yeah, the, the, his fight is not over. He's a free man physically, but there is still a long legal road to go here. The state is appealing the overturning of the conviction. They may call for a new trial. How worried are you about that? How worried is he about that? He's not worried because he knows he did not commit the crime, did not murder Martha Moxley. So he would look forward to another trial where all of the evidence would be heard by the jury. But, but in presenting his side at the bond hearing, the prosecutor stood up and said, let's remember here, a judge overturned this conviction because he thinks the attorney for Michael Skakel acted poorly, not because he said that Michael Skakel is innocent. And that prosecutor went on to say the state had and still has a strong case against Michael Skakel. Well, the judge who ordered the new trial said very, in a 136-page opinion, that the case against Michael uh, Skakel was weak, very weak. And so we anticipate uh, that at a, at a retrial, the jury will finally hear all of the evidence. In, in your efforts to win a new trial, you filed a petition with the court that basically said there's a chance that it was not Michael Skakel, but his brother Thomas, who committed the murder of Martha Moxley. He was an early suspect. He was perhaps one of the last people seen with Martha Moxley when she was alive. Even the judge who overturned the conviction said the defense should have raised that possibility during the trial. It would have gone to reasonable doubt. If there is a second trial, will that be part of the strategy? Would you be willing to point a finger at Michael's own brother Thomas in this case? Well, we're, we most certainly, if there's a retrial, we not only would present that evidence for the jury to consider, but we also would pre present evidence regarding other people who have been suspects over the years. Remember, Michael was never a suspect until the 1990s. And we should mention that Thomas Skakel, although an early suspect, has always maintained his innocence and was never charged. But uh, wouldn't that be an emotional dilemma? for Michael Skakel to sit in a courtroom and listen to his attorney or attorneys point a possible finger at his own brother. Well, there's no doubt about that, that it would be an emotional uh, turmoil for Michael because he loves his brother, cares for his brother. And we're not saying that his brother committed the crime. We're simply saying that the jury should Does hear... Michael believe it's possible his brother committed the crime? I asked Michael that question, and he said he does not believe that his brother committed the crime. 
Will Michael take the stand if there is a second trial? Absolutely. And do you think you can get a fair trial? There's always been incredible media attention surrounding this crime ever since 1975, but it seems to have intensified over the last couple of years. Can Michael Skakel get a fair trial? Not in Stanford, not, not in Fairfield County, where the attitude uh, actually what, what, what was not understood at the first trial was the enormous impact publicity had the book by Dominic Dunn, the book by Mark Furman, and of course the great sympathy for Mrs. Moxley, which everyone shares. And so consequently, I, if he's going to get a fair trial, it's not going to be in Fairfield County. You talk about the sympathy for Mrs. Moxley. She was in court yesterday with Martha's brother, John, as applause broke out after Michael Skakel was released. Imagine what she must be feeling this morning. She's a very brave woman, and she's a very determined woman. Um, she's convinced that Michael committed the crime. Uh, and you could have nothing but sympathy and admiration for her. She's a very decent person. And can you imagine you're in the most wealthy area of the world in 1975, the most secure uh, area, and your daughter is killed viciously in the driveway of her home. So it's, it's unimaginable how she has been able to deal with this all of these years. Hubert Santos. Mr. Santos, I appreciate your time this morning. Thanks very much. Thank you. And now, here's Savannah. All right, Matt, thanks. We will shift.